So, so there are going to be different passions. Different passions. So you should not be upset or frustrated with someone who doesn't have the same passion you have. Be passionate about what you're passionate about. And give yourself to it and find some other people that are passionate about that and then together y'all can get something done. But you shouldn't be upset because someone else is not passionate about what you're passionate about. Because there's more than one thing that needs to get done. There's a lot of stuff that needs to get done. So God, I believe that God calls people, he gifts them, and then he gives them a passion in an area, and they want to do that thing, and they need to surround themselves with people who want to do that thing. But everything has to be connected together. The differences of ministries, but the same Lord. So again, he says, now, it has pleased God to put different ministries in the church. That has pleased God. It's the same God over all the ministries. And he's placed the different ministries in the church. Are you following? Verse 6, there are diversity of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. And if you see what Paul is doing here, he is weaving this whole idea that there is diversity in the body of Christ, but there will be harmony in the body of Christ because God is the God of the church. And God can choose to put different things together, different ministries together that might appear like they don't complement each other. But since God is over it all, he can pull it all together and he can make it all work. Verse 7. Now watch this. Verse 6 says, and there are, there are diversity or different activities, but it's the same God who works all in all, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So he says, ultimately, what God does in the church is to benefit and to profit the whole body. The whole body. Some of y'all love spaghetti. But if you cook spaghetti every day, I don't think that you would love spaghetti after about 30 days, you see. I mean, you, 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 you might love something, but you don't eat the same thing every day over and over and over and over again. He says within the body of Christ that God has put the diversity in the body of Christ so that the whole body would benefit and that the whole body will be engaged, so that the whole body will, will be alive and that people will not become bored because all we did was just one thing. If we only did one thing, then 99% of the people will get bored if we only did the one thing. But we need ushers and we need people who do greeting and we need choir members and we need deacons and we need trustees and we need people to clean the church and we need people to work with the children we need people to do evangelism and discipleship. We need people to go to the prisons. We need people who got a passion for social justice as well. This way, everybody can be engaged somewhere and that presents a body, a body that is alive, a body that is engaged and that all can profit. You see, as we engage in the body, what it does, it helps us to maintain spiritual tone. It helps us to maintain a spiritual discipline. It helps to keep us spiritually healthy. That's what engagement in ministry does. The people who don't engage in ministry, then they become lethargic just like if we don't engage in physical exercise. I mean, we can eat the healthiest food in the world, but if we don't engage in some type of exercise, if we don't move, the physical body was designed for motion. It was designed for movement. And that's why the sedentary lifestyles that we have a tendency to develop as we age because technology makes it easier to be still. Are y'all listening to me? I mean, you know, if we really wanted to get healthy, you know what we should do? We should lock the, 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 uh, the remote control up for about 30 days. Now think about how much exercise we would get if we just locked the remote control up. Either we'd watch one channel or we'd be up and down, up and down, up and down. And that in itself would help us get some exercise. Anybody listen to me? When I was a boy growing up in my little hometown and, you know, we didn't have a black and white TV. I mean, the color TV, I think, that I got ready to go to college. Always black and white. And it had those, uh, those manual contraption to turn the channel, you see. And so let me tell you, my trick was, here's how I controlled the TV. And I controlled the TV in our house when I was growing up. I controlled the TV because I always knew where the channel locks were. Y'all know what the channel lock is, do you? <laughs> you know what a pair of pliers are, don't you? 
you know, those old manuals, they always tore up so you have a pair of pliers or a channel lock to turn the channels on the thing. So what I would do, I would always hide them. I'd put the TV on the station I wanted to be on, then I would hide the channel. They couldn't change the channel. Yeah, we, we just hide, just hide the remote control. It would force us to get some exercise. Well, so spiritually, it's the same thing. We, we can be getting a habit and a routine where we're just taking in, taking in, taking in, and we're not doing spiritual exercise, and therefore we become spiritually lethargic. So when that happens, guess what? The preacher gets boring. <laughs> when we become spiritually lethargic, well, if he would preach better, I would be more excited about serving God. If he had something to say, that it would move me and stir me to want to move. No, no, no. If we would get up and go out there and serve God and see God doing something, that's what excites you. What excites us is see God doing something. <laughs> to know that God is still alive and that we running at God in the schoolhouse, in the street, on the job, at the jail, that God is moving all the time, that's what keeps us excited. So Paul says that what's in the body is to benefit the body, to keep the body alive, to keep the body calibrated, to keep the body strong. Now look at verse, verses nine, 8 through 11. In verses 8 through 11, Paul was not attempting to give a detailed a lesson on spiritual gifts. What he was doing here, he was pointing out the fact that within the body of Christ to the Corinthian church, and they would have to say, well, he's right, he's right, he's right. He says, for the one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another work of miracles, to another prophecy. And what Paul is showing is this amazing difference in diversity in the body of Christ. But at the same time, it was all created by the same God through the Holy Spirit. Let me move this thing forward a bit, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. What Paul wants to show them here in these remaining verses in 1 Corinthians 12, through this body analogy of the church, he wants to show them the unity of the body, the diversity of the body, the sovereignty in the body, and the harmony in the body. The unity in the body, the diversity in the body, the sovereignty in the body, and the harmony in the body. And look at how he does this. He says, for as one body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So he juxtaposes the body of uh, the physical body, the human body, with the body of Christ. So that's his analogy. That's his illustration. So now they, they understand the concept of the spiritual body. As a matter of fact, the, the Corinthians, who have been greatly influenced by the Greek thought, the Corinthians, they love the body. They loved their spiritual, their physical bodies. They had gymnasiums and they exercised and they had the Ithamian Games, which was a forerunner to the, to, to the present day Olympic Games. And so they loved their bodies and exercising their bodies and almost worshiping their bodies. And so Paul says there's a physical body and then there is a spiritual body. Then in verse 13, he gives them the big idea. He says it's one spirit for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. So Paul gives them this big idea right here about the unity of the body. He says there is but one way of salvation, that's through faith in Christ. There is but one way to enter into the family of God, that's by the spirit of God taking us and regenerating us, making us alive. And it's the Spirit of God that takes us and he baptizes us into the body of Christ. And that's why you have this ordinance of the church of physical water baptism. It really has its genesis in what happens when a person gets saved. You see, when a person is saved, it is invisible. It's a great mystery. You don't see the transaction that takes place. But the spiritual transaction that takes place when a person repents, turns away from their own way, turns toward God and receives the Lord Jesus Christ, what happens in this mysterious, invisible, spiritual transaction that God the Holy Spirit takes that individual spiritually and God the Holy Spirit immerses them into the body of Christ. He immerses them into the body of Christ. And what Paul says here, it doesn't matter whether you're Jew 
or Gentile, bond or free, 